Hi there, Paul Kirtley here. And today I want to talk about something that's been on my mind on and off and probably increasingly over recent times. And that is the color of your gear or the color of my gear and specifically the color of certain pieces of equipment. And I guess all of these are critical pieces of equipment. Now, it seems to me in the bushcraft world, if that is such a thing, um, and I've been around that world for quite a long time now, we tend to like natural colors. We tend to like muted colors. We like green shirts. We like brown pants, trousers. We like um, green tarps. We like all of these things. And I've got drawers full of things like frost knives. I think this was one of the first moras I got. This went back when it was frosts back in the day. This one onto this clipper type, again, frosts, again. Um, then we have the Mora Companion, same basically shape, different handle, different sheath, and the uh, heavy duty version as well. And I've got multiple editions of these, if you like, around the place. I've got them in toolkits, I've got them in equipment boxes, I've got them in course equipment boxes and we hand them out to our students you know students on our two-day courses get one of these students on our week-long courses our elementary courses get one of these to keep and it doesn't happen very often but occasionally they get lost and I was just in the habit of always giving out the green ones because that's what I had been given and then you know, I've also got custom knives, you know, or at least handmade knives that again are natural muted colors, brown leather sheaths, brown wooden handles. Um, and if you drop them in the woods where it's all natural colors, there's a chance that they're quite difficult to find. And this is one of the things that's been sort of weighing on my mind. And if you compare this to this, you can see what I'm talking about. And actually that on the, on the camera, the, the little screen that I'm looking at here, just next to my camera, that doesn't even look as bright. It might do on your screen, I don't know, but it doesn't even look as bright as it actually is. This is pretty much a fluoro orange sheath. And uh, you know, the, the plastic parts and the handle that aren't the rubberized uh, black uh, material there, again, are orange and that's a lot easier to see and yes okay I've purposely chosen today to film um, we're starting to turn a little bit it's September we're starting to get some browns as well as all the greens certainly against green that is easy to see we've got some natural browns around the bracken around me is starting to turn some of the the beech trees are starting to drop some of the leaves some of the birch trees are starting to to turn um, and yes, okay, oranges start to blend in a little bit more with those colors, but that fluoro, yeah, really does stand out. And that's one of the things that I've been thinking about, and I've started to give students a choice. Do they want an orange one or do they want a green one on, on a course? And, you know, various people have got different motivations for being outside, but, you know, tactical situations aside, I think there's a strong argument for important pieces of equipment being brightly colored. Um, now I know some people will stick bright bits of tape. Uh, I've seen people use sort of what hazard tape, yellow and black hazard tape. I've seen people use bits of orange sticky tape on, you know, take a green knife and put a bit of sticky tape on there. And I've seen it on um, tools such as saws and things as well, and even ax handles, but I don't like it because ultimately you get some of the gum, some of the glue coming off and I, get that stickiness on your hand and you know it's already dirty enough outside trying to stay clean in dust and dirt etc and then that again gets stuff stuck onto you anyway that might sound a little bit fussy but fundamentally i don't like that tackiness and that stickiness i'd prefer something just to be the color i want um if i can um now in some ways this seems completely obvious because important pieces of equipment you know like survival equipment for decades and decades and decades have been brightly colored like this peri whistle like this lifeboat whistle yeah orange okay survival bag yeah and those of you that understand what that is survival aids will understand the vintage of that that's bright orange okay um survival shelters like this two-person um survival shelter 
the group shelter, that's bright orange so it can be seen. And even other things that are important, like, you know, in the hunting world, so this hat, it's, you know, it's quite nice and drab, but if I bring this forwards, it, re it reveals a nice orange blaze on the top so other hunters, other sh shooters can, can see me, okay? On that Sealand uh, beta hat. Um, even stuff like, here in this in this kind of IFAC kit here, um, the tourniquet that I've got in there, uh, the cat in there is bright orange, so it can be seen, you know, against um, dark coloured clothing. Um, so orange is a really good visibility colour. Yeah, orange is a really good visibility colour, and this is one of the things that I've been thinking about. Um, so an obvious critical piece of equipment is a knife. And you maybe should be asking yourself the question, should that be orange rather than some really drab color that if I put it down on the ground, if I lose it, if it falls out the sheath, um, I can't find it so easily. It's not so easy to spot. Um, now this is one I've been using for quite some time um, and it has dulled down a little bit. You can possibly see that it's just a bit dirty. I've been using that for quite some time, that knife. This is a, a sheath that Mora made for some time. I don't think they um, make it anymore. It's kind of like a, a Cordura over sheath with a, a clip. I think it was tested for, maybe for the military. I actually don't know. Somebody gave it to me, um, but I quite like it um, because it has a closed belt loop on there. Um, but I've been using that knife for teaching, for travel. Um, they're really good travel knives because you don't have to worry about whether or not the wood is allowed in the country. You don't have to worry really about them being stolen out of your luggage. They're not irreplaceable, maybe like some custom knife or something that someone's gifted you that's really special or that's a limited edition. Um, and um, yeah, so I've, I've used this in uh, recently, you know, I've used this on trips in Canada. I've used this on um, a trip uh, where I was teaching in Australia. I've used this uh, when I was uh, t uh, on a course in Arizona recently. Um, they're great knives, the, the heavy duty moral companion knives. And that's not what this video is about. But what I'm saying is this is not something that I'm saying that you should do that I don't do. It's actually, I've started doing this, particularly on trips where my, having my knife and not losing it is really critical. And also, my students use these knives and I like using them as well. They're good knives, so we can do exactly the same things with them. And, and students don't think that I'm using some special knife that gives me some sort of special powers. I'm using exactly the same knives as they are. Um, so that is something I've been using and it stayed pretty bright orange, even though I've had it all over the world in recent years. And um, you, can, you can see that there. So that, to me, is a, is a good option. Um, I think you have to have a strong argument why you maybe want a green one. Um, even if you're hunting, you know, some hunting gear has orange blaze on it, right? A lot of prey animals don't see very well in that part of the spectrum. They pick up movement very well. Um, they see more blue. They see less things like orange. Birds, however, have very good color vision. So maybe if you're a birder, if you want to go out bird watching, if you want to be um, unseen to birds, maybe that's an issue having brightly colored things and obviously people have got good color vision as well and if you want to be stealthy and tactical and all those sorts of things then clearly bright orange is not the color for you but as a general leisure user of the outdoors um, where your critical critical equipment is very important you've got to have a strong argument why perhaps it isn't um, as visible as it could be and this is something that I've been thinking about and um, this might be completely obvious to you or this might be a really radical uh, thought process to you but it's just again I'm sharing something that I've been thinking about for a while so on that on that um, you know we can think about things like saws okay Again, for years and years and years, I've used a green Laplander saw. And yes, I've got a little orange uh, lanyard on there and that's got quite dirty. It's not as visible as it was now. And I think that would be quite hard to see on the ground, probably still easier than a, than a green one. But when it was new, that was quite, quite bright. And that's another point. We tend to make lanyards for things. You know, again, you know, as bushcraft people, we like all these colors of, you know, browns and blacks and greens, all these muted drab colors for for our paracord and we tend to make lanyards out of them but why not orange why not orange on something even if the item for example this is a mauser it's like a swiss army knife it's a mauser officer's knife it's just a good swiss army knife i've had that for years that goes back those of you that are the old school guys and girls will 
remember the survival aids catalogue they had those in them they were about 13 quid i think i've had that for 40 years i think that knife um that's got a little orange lanyard on it because i you can't get those with an orange orange scales on them but again that makes it a little bit more visible but again that's got quite dirty now so maybe i should replace it and make it a bit more visible but you can make things more visible just with the lanyards a classic 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 thing and it isn't just Joe Robinette. There are plenty of people who have done this um, as well. But Joe seems to be singled out um, for that. And he and I had quite a, a, a candid conversation about the loss of his ferro rod on one of my podcasts quite a few years ago. Um, he's one of the people that gets singled out for that. But he's not the only person to ever, ever lost a, a ferro rod. I never have, I have to say. But I know some of my students have. I know... Um, they've told me about that on courses and i know other people on you know in quite high profile tv shows and things have as well but that's a classic thing for people to lose and the way people lose it is they get excited about getting their fire going they drop the spark onto the birch bark or what have you and then they're lifting the twigs on and getting the fire going and that goes down on the ground so one of the things you should always get into the habit of and if you watch any of my fire lighting videos you'll see me do this is if i use a knife and a ferro rod for example they go back where they belong almost immediately if not immediately and they don't tend to go down on the ground and that's a really good discipline to get into when you're practicing close to home in the backyard etc etc but equally you know if you do put it down and you can't find it you want it to be visible and again i'm guilty of this i i tend to buy them that you know just as they come with the sort of black handles so that's the strike fire um, one that i use that I, i've used for many years um that model i've also used light my fire um ferro rods and um this is about the most orange one that i can find at the moment this is one of the light my fires but that's you know it's quite a natural orange it's sort of it, it's it's more of a sort of plant pot orange it's not quite terracotta but it isn't fluoro yeah if you compare it to that it's not fluoro like that but it is still relatively bright but let me know in the comments below if you know of any ferro rods really fluorescent and i know you can make your own handles and glue them on and all that sort of thing but if you know of anyone who makes them with fluoro handles let me know but you know that is clearly more visible potentially uh, than black or green and of course we could put an orange lanyard on there as well and make it more visible still so that's something that you should perhaps and you know i'm thinking should perhaps be quite visible and orange um i started talking about saws didn't i and i didn't finish i'm jumping around a bit here i've got all sorts of goodies on the ground here but why not an orange saw that is so much more visible than that now <clears throat> i've had an orange one of these in my rescue kit in my canoe rescue kit for years and years and years and years because i know that's my rescue saw i know it isn't one of the many of these that i've got around that i use personally and also we have in the course equipment um but one thing i noticed and i don't know if you've noticed this as well the, the orange one that i had in the past it didn't seem as aggressive aggressively sharp as the green ones and i don't know if that was just my perception um, i don't know if you found that as well and even this one this green one feels quite sharp to my to the touch this one not so much and I, I know in my other in my other one i actually replaced the blade um with one out of a brand new green one because I've, I've got loads of spares um and i, I don't want to get into a conversation about silkies versus these um we can have that conversation in another in another um video it's not about barcodes it's about maybe your saw should be brightly colored because it's easier to find if you leave it on the ground that's something i see students put down on the ground a lot um it takes a while to get them disciplined to be putting that back in a pocket because once you have a sheath like this this um, leather sheath and that was sent to me by uh, uh, henny's leather if i'm pronouncing that correctly that was sent to me for free he'd seen my old one was falling apart and he said i've really enjoyed your videos um can i send you one just as a thank you which was very kind and i've been using that um for quite a few years now but that orange one will fit quite nicely in there so maybe maybe i should be carrying an orange saw along with an orange knife because they're more visible um 
yes, it's much easier to pop that back where it belongs once you have a sheath on your belt. But as I say, people have a tendency, more than knives, I think, to put these down on the ground when they're doing things. And again, they can get lost. <clears throat> um, then what other critical pieces? So fire is critical, cutting tools are critical, um, sticking with fire, um, match safe. You know, there's a strong argument that your match safe should be some sort of bright orange color or similar, um, like this one, waterproof match safe. I think you've all seen these before. I'll put links to some of these things below. I'm not trying to sell you gear here, um, far from it. I don't even have an online store, but um, if there are any Amazon links before, they will likely be affiliate links where I get a small commission. You don't pay any more, but um, it just helps pay uh, for the channel. Um, I don't take sponsorships, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, I earn my living from teaching people skills. Um, but like I say, if you if you wanted to click through to some of these items, if you've never seen them before. Um, I'll put the links below and then that's easier for you, for you to find them. And again, cigarette lighter, Bic lighter. Um, I like these uh, ExoTac uh, covers for them. I'll talk about why maybe in another video, but again, orange, yeah? And I bought these, and, and this is perhaps one of the things that actually got me thinking about this because I bought these items orange thinking they're hard to lose. And then I started reviewing some of my other critical pieces of equipment thinking about, well, maybe they should be orange too. And again, it's got an orange lanyard. So two more pieces of fire lighting equipment. So you've got three pieces there, which is a sensible thing to carry. And they all have pros and cons. And again, maybe I'll talk about that in another video in the future. Um, all these are not made equal in terms of what you can light and how you can light them and how long they last. And, what conditions they're susceptible to and not. Okay, so fire stuff is definitely critical in wilderness situations. Um, I think it should be easy to see if you've dropped it or even if you just made a mistake of putting it down on the ground for a minute. Another thing, even though this whistle that I carry, I carry that on, that's a pocket lanyard and I've made videos about pocket lanyards before. I'll try and link to, to one somewhere. Um, Orange lanyard, again, very dirty, probably needs replacing. Um, now that whistle, that Fox 40 whistle, is quite a bright, almost fluoro green. But again, in spring greenery on the ground, that might be hard to see if I drop that. Fluoro orange one, perhaps, would be even easier to see. So again, that's quite a critical thing for calling for help. It's much easier than shouting. It'll travel further, etc. So again, critical pocket items, that perhaps should be orange as well. And then other things that you might want to think about being orange, um, this is produced by a friend of mine in Australia, um, Gordon Dedman at uh, Bushcraft Survival Australia. And again, no sponsorship. He uh, did give me this when I visited him in Oz. But the point is, and I've got green ones of these as well, the point is it's a, it's a large bandana, um, which is always useful for wiping sweat or putting on your head or um, filter, you know, roughly filtering, you know, leaf litter out of water or um, triangular bandage or, you know, whatever, you know, you can do with a piece of material. There's lots of things you can do with a piece of material. But this one's orange, and so I can use it for attracting attention to myself as well. Um, I can make an orange flag out of that. Um, I, can, I can move it around. I can make myself more visible. So again, maybe, you know, this is, this is moving beyond thinking about losing pieces of equipment, but we're also thinking about, okay, well, maybe that should be uh, or could be orange as well. And of course, you know, survival bags, I've got the old survival aids one there, but still produced today, you know, survival bags, bivy bags um, of this type. This is not a breathable bivy, bivy bag. This is just a polythene bag for emergencies. And there's a number of ways that you can use those, but again, orange for attracting attention. So again, reinforcing the fact that orange is easy to spot out in nature. That's why these things are orange. It's why the emergency pieces of equipment are orange. And, Maybe think about applying that principle to some other parts of your equipment so that if you do mislay them, if you do put them down by accident, if you do drop them on the trail and need to go back and look for them, they're much easier to see. I will talk more about using these in future videos. There's some good ideas that I have that I'd like to share with you um, that uh, I've either thought about myself or other people have shown me over the years ways of using these that I would like to share with you on some future videos as well. But um, we'll leave that there for today. So um, let me know what you think. Is that a completely radical idea that some of your critical uh, gear should be brightly colored so that you don't mislay it? Or if you do, you can find it more easily. Um, am I being massively controversial there or not? Um, but also, I don't think I am, but 
also below let me know if you think if you have anything else that you have brightly colored that you think is important um, and as i say if you know of any more fluoro versions of these or anything else um, let me know in the comments below let me know your thoughts and i look forward to reading those um, and you know that you know the drill um, if you like this video and you'd like to see more of this type of thing uh, subscribe certainly but you know how the youtube algorithm works click that bell thing as well so that you get notifications and like the video as well that helps any comment i think helps with the algorithm as well but more importantly um i can't always and i don't reply to all comments i just there's just too many across all my videos but i like reading through them particularly when i've just published a video if you put comments on there in the next few days i will certainly read those if they warrant a reply or demand a reply i will reply but rest assured that i will read your comments and i'm always interested to know what you think and um, this is a two-way conversation at the end of the day um, so thanks for watching i've been paul kirtley and i will look forward to seeing you on another video before too long. I'll link a few here, um, links to some of the stuff below and some of the videos that I've mentioned below as well. And I look forward to seeing you in another video before too long. Take care. Cheers.